This is an interesting one, folks. This is on biorx4.org, link in the description. As you can see here, it's 20-hydroxyectizone activates the protective arm of the renin-angiotensin system via MAS receptor. And this is something that uh, Marwan pointed out to me a while back, and I hadn't seen this particular study. If I overlooked at the time, my apologies, but I think you guys are going to find this interesting. One of the things that it talks about is ectosterone's ability to lower myostatin. Now, myostatin is the protein that our body releases to prevent us from getting too much muscle. We've all seen pictures probably of the myostatin knockout mice that are just massive. They look like little Ronnie Coleman mice or the uh, Belgian blue bulls that are huge and muscular. They actually have a genetic abnormality that prevents them from pre... Uh, from expressing myostatin genetically. And what they use to test ectosterone against is IGF-1, which I thought was very interesting. Just in its ability to uh, lower myostatin off of baseline, and we'll get into that in just a moment. As it says here, and as Marwan pointed out to me, it says, however, its mechanism of action is still debated, involving either an unidentified GPCR or the estrogen receptor beta. Our goal of the study was to better understand 20E, or ectosterone, or 20-hydroxyectisone, mechanism of action. 20-hydroxyectisone effects were investigated on pre-established murine myotubes following six days of differentiation. In other words, they let them to develop in the Petri dish for six days, and then they added uh, the introduced 20E, ectosterone. An anabolic effect was investigated through de novo protein synthesis assay. A dose-dependent increase in protein synthesis was observed in response to 20E treatment of C2-C12 myotubes versus untreated conditions. IGF-1 at 100 nanograms per milliliter, employed as a positive control, displayed as expected an improvement in incorporation of 3-hydroxyleucine. Uh, this is how they show that there's been protein synthesis, as they find this... Uh, binding on it, incorporation. 20E effect was significant, yada yada, but there was a diminishing return when they doubled the dose from five units to 10 units. So if we go down here to this, yeah, and this is a little bit, so control, this was 100%. So this is normal. Here's IGF-1, it raised everything on protein synthesis up to, we would say about 120. When it got up to five units of ectosterone, it actually surpassed their control of IGF-1. And the relative myostatin, this is going to drive me nuts. Okay, we'll just do it in the small picture. The control, okay, now these are myostatin levels. So if you see up here, 1 equals standard. This is control. IGF-1 lowered myostatin to a, just about cut it in half, just under 6, 0.6, so 60%. And then these little, little tiny amounts of ectosterone leading up to bigger amounts, bigger amounts. And for some reason, they're not showing the five unit. They said that with 10 units, it was not much better than five. <clears throat> but as we can see here with the 10 units, we are very, very close to the IGF-1 levels of reduction of myostatin. This is significant. So it is dose dependent. So what I've been banging on about for a year and a half now is that Ectosterone supplements are way, way, way underdosed for what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the anabolic effects. We're trying to get the protein synthesis. We're trying to suppress myostatin. Well, we didn't know we were, but now we are, right? So this is one of the things that it does. And unless you're taking a significant amount, high enough concentration, high enough bioavailability, it's not going to happen. But as we can see here, we've got almost this 10-unit one and this IGF-1 control, positive control, to show, hey, this works almost as good as IGF-1. Plain as day, folks, but this again, this is in a Petri dish. Myostatin is a major autocrine regulator that inhibits muscle growth in mammals. Yeah, 10 units. Okay, so this breaks it down a little more clearly. Control was actually about 1.2 relative gene expression of myostatin. We want to lower that as much as possible. It's like golf. We want to get a low score. So this is about 0.6, so 60%. So it lowered it by, actually this is this IGF-1 cut it in half. And 10 units of ectosterone got it darn close. So we're at like, oh, we've still reduced it by like 45%, 40%, something like that. So significant reduction. They go on to talk about how ectosterone <clears throat> and angiotensin uh, uh, agonist uh, one through seven act via mass receptor. 
And you can read this study yourself. I thought this was another nice, simple diagram that they put out. So ecdysterone, this is, this is from their study and how they're, <clears throat> how they're interpreting the data. Proposed mechanism of myostatin gene control by angiotensin 1 through 7, 20E ecdysterone and E2, or estradiol. So, more on that, more on the estradiol in a little while. The 20E affects the mass receptor, produces nitric oxide synthesis. We know that. When you take enough ecdysterone, you get a significant pump. And those that know, know that's a pump in the bedroom, that's a pump in the gym, that's a pump wherever you go, as long as you're not down in a whole bunch of caffeine, which is a vasoconstrictor. So if you wanna test your ectysterone, test the pump, however you wanna try that, right? But this is the proposed method of activation. But as you can see, E2 does the same thing. So they figured that, my, that ectysterone must work along those same lines, but what they're finding out is that it actually goes through the MAS receptor, then to the estrogen receptor, then it lowers myostatin, increasing protein synthesis. Or that's their conclusion. I thought this was very interesting. I hope you do too. I hope you see the significance of this.